This video discusses topics that may be disturbing to some viewers. It discusses cases of missing and or murdered victims whose case was solved using forensic genetic genealogy. Viewer discretion is advised. In Dade County, Georgia at approximately 2 in the afternoon December 16, 1988, Georgia Bureau of Investigations and the Dade County Sheriff's Office were asked to respond to a body located on Interstate 59 within about 5 miles from the Alabama-Georgia state line. The body was that of an unknown female that had been both sexually violated and strangled. For many years both Dade County Sheriff's and Georgia Bureau of Investigations fearlessly investigated to identify the female. There was a forensic artist from He Georgia Bureau of Investigations that made a clay renderings and recreated a composite sketch of what the victim would look like in hopes of giving back her identity. Around the mid-2000 after the case was reassigned the investigators found additional evidence they hoped could help identify her. That evidence was sent to the FBI lab in Washington, D.C. for testing. Scientists were able to come up with a DNA profile of the victim and entered it into the missing person DNA database. Again the case was reassigned in 2015 and a new clay renderings and composite was made of the victims for an age progression. Georgia Bureau of Investigations reached out to the FBI about possibly using the new type of investigative tool forensic genetic genealogy. The FBI agreed that it would be a good investigative tool and through that technology and Othram Lab, Stacy Lynn Chahorsky was given back her identity. She was reported missing in January of 1989. Her body will be reunited with her family. Now the next step for Georgia Bureau of Investigations and Dade County Sheriffs was to find out who was responsible for her death. Knowing that they had such great success using forensic genetic genealogy both the Georgia Bureau of Investigations and Dade County Sheriffs hoped that it could help in solving who may have been responsible for Stacy's death. At one point serial killer Samuel Little confessed to it but was eliminated via DNA. Using the same process of forensic genetic genealogy they were able to find a person of interest or lead as to the murderer and requested DNA from a family member of this person of interest. The family member agreed and a DNA swab samples was given. The possible suspect was a gentleman that was 34 years old at the time that Stacy was murdered. He was a truck driver that would drive from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Birmingham, Alabama to Nashville as well as he was known as a stunt driver. He had a criminal record out of Florida, North Carolina and Georgia, however all of his convictions were before the mandatory DNA testing which is now in place. The person of interest was verified via DNA and Stacy's killer was named. His name was Henry Frederick Wise or as he was also known as Haas Wise. After the positive identification, no charges were handed down to Henry Wise as he had been burned to death in a South Carolina speedway due to a car accident. Mary Beth Smith who is Stacy's mother expressed her appreciation and gratitude to all those that helped bring Stacy home to Norton Shores, Michigan where she has been laid to rest. Mm -hmm.